What's going on, fellow Maplers? The Maple Momentary event celebrating Maple Story's 18th anniversary is live in game through June 13th. This event is structured in tiers or floors with more and better rewards unlocking as you progress. This video will cover the first tier in detail as well as the rewards for the event overall and briefly touch upon rewards that are unlocked at the other tiers too. I'll release additional videos giving a rundown of each floor as I unlock them. Additionally, keep in mind I play the game primarily on NA Reboot, so some sections like the event rewards may differ from the regular servers. If this video helps you, definitely make sure to like and subscribe to support the channel. Select a tree that doesn't grow quest in the event notifier to start the event. Here, you will walk through a short series of dialogue and cutscenes where you'll be introduced to Ellie and Rith, two babies who you will help grow to adulthood. Upon completion, you will be at the momentary event map, with access to the first level of a four-tiered tree, each tier a separate stage of Rith and Ellie's growth. You will also unlock the ability to travel back here whenever you want through the event notifier. So you keep hearing me referencing tiers, how does that tier-based system work? You initially start on the first of four floors within the moment tree and only have access to a fraction of the event's features and rewards. Additionally, some of the features you do have access to become much better as you reach subsequent floors. In order to progress, accept Rith and Ellie's growth journal quest to start helping Ellie and Rith grow by journaling daily experiences. This unlocks the main event UI, which is structured as a cake to celebrate the birth all the way up to their 18th birthdays, with rewards at each step. To age Rith and Ellie, simply kill 20 mobs to earn one memory token and one childhood innocence gauge. When you fill 10 gauges, it activates the Happy Playtime skill, which provides 20 memory tokens. To put it simply, you just need to kill 2,000 mobs each day to cap memory tokens. And just a side note, memory tokens are just event coins. Once this is completed, remember, always open the UI and talk to Rith and Ellie before reset to celebrate their birthday, or it won't count towards the daily progression. You can only progress Rith and Ellie once a day, but can cap 300 coins on multiple characters each day. After six days, you will unlock the second tier of the cake and the second floor. After an additional five days, you will unlock the third tier, and after another 10 days, you will unlock the final tier and have access to all the events. If you started this event on day one by May 23rd, you will have access to all event features for 21 days. While unlocking each birthday, you will also earn growth memories. These can be used on a variety of stats. If your priority is leveling mules, legion, or link characters, I would definitely put these into EXP, normal monster damage, and crit rate. If you're focusing on boss mule speed, I would put the points into boss damage and ignore enemy defense. Any mix will work as well, but tailor it to your needs. Also, I'm quite impressed this time by Nexon. They actually decided to add a few quality of life improvements to this event compared to the past ones. They implemented a catch-up feature which allows you to convert 300 of the event coins if you've fallen far enough behind into progression. These become available starting the last week of May. Now that you know how the tiered system and base event works, let's walk through each feature on floor 1 starting with ways to earn event coins. Talk to Herman to grant access to the nostalgic puzzle game. This is simply a series of three jigsaw puzzles including iconic maple story imagery like this one of characters riding a banana. You can complete this minigame solo or in a group of up to three people. However, completing it with more people is a lot quicker, so I'd recommend you queue that way. You can complete this up to four times a week on any character to earn 200 event coins for a total of 800 a week transferable between characters. Keep in mind, the event reset is on Wednesday. This next event feature can only be completed after one character has completed their daily coin cap. Talk to Tirith and tell her you want to play Whack-A-Mole this will take you to a Punch King style event, which just simply means a stationary DPS check. Clearing the event will grant you 1500 points. Two of those points is equivalent to one memory token. Why they didn't make it one to one, I'll never know. You can do this on up to five separate characters a week to earn a maximum of 2000 event coins. This means you don't need to clear it on all characters. You only need 4000 cumulative points, which is much more accessible. After accumulating 15,000 and 30,000 points across the event, you get a couple mole themed chairs as well, which is pretty cool. The final event feature on floor 1 where you can earn coins is through the Lucky Memory Pig Bank, only it unlocks at May 31st, but once it does, you can talk to the piggy bank after the daily coin cap to earn additional coins. So, 
Those are the main methods for earning event coins. The only other point to note is that Sundays will also have a 2x event coins earned during the event period. This does not apply to defeating moles and memory piggy bank lucky events. The puzzle event is not a part of the exclusions in the patch notes, but I would imagine this is the case as well. Overall, if you are daily capping and completing all weekly events, you will earn up to 2100 coins on each character you cap, an additional 2800 that can be transferred between any character. The only other event features you can access on floor 1 besides reward shops are temporary buffs. The first is the event skill which activates up to 10 times while coin capping. This creates a heart around your character which pulses 5 times hitting up to 10 enemies. It also summons 4 rocking horses around the map which gives large amounts of XP when killed. The other is the cooking collection buff. You can access this while mobbing through the event UI by selecting the power up cooking collection quest. This buff gets incrementally stronger with each floor, but at floor 1 you have the option between a 30 minute 10% XP buff or a stat buff including 5% boss damage and ignore enemy defense up to 4 times a day. By floor 4 this goes up to 40% XP and plus 20 stat boss damage and IED. This is pretty substantial, so make sure you remember to use these. Alright, now that we've run through all the features, let's talk about some juicy event rewards. Starting with the event coin reward shop, you can access this by speaking with Herman. The primary unique event reward this time around is various types of rings. You can purchase one of each per character, and this is a phenomenal way to get rings on your mules. The highlight of this shop by far is the synergy ring. Put this on pretty much every single character you plan to level for legion or link skills, you can buy three of these a week just by completing the weekly event features on your main and essentially have a minimum of 18 chaos rings across your account by the end of the event. Outside of this, you can just pick and choose which boss meals to fill out ring slots on as needed. Another ring of note here is the Adventure Deep Dark Critical Ring which provides 15 crit rate and 5 crit damage but lacks the ability to gain potential for a great low investment ring on mules that struggle with crit rate. For the enhanced tab, this is a great way to get rebirth flames which are hard to come by. Additionally, some small benefits are the epic scrolls, stamps, and star force scroll if you're struggling in the early game. In the growth tab, you can always grab daily XP coupons and hyper teleport rocks if you're low on those. Additionally, they have two trait boost potions per character, which is a phenomenal way to get the pocket slot on all your mules and level hard to level traits like insight for elemental resistance. Also, it's a great way to get easy node stones and symbols to progress a bit quicker. Finally, in the decoration tab, unique swag is always great and they have some goofy ones with the balloon puppy this time around. Definitely spice up your in-game wardrobe for free rather than spending any real dollars. That about sums up the event coin shop. Next, to head over to Lyft to access the meso coin shop which sees the return of the fairy heart, albeit quadrupled in price. It is still worth it though to buy on your main even though the price does seem steep and the reason for this is because the item level is 100 which is the cutoff for the next tier of potential on items and the fairy heart provides super easy access to an additional 3 lines of stat. However, it's a bit costly for mules now unless you are progressing past Lomian. The fairy heart is really the only thing of note in the meso coin shop, the other items are just way too expensive at their current prices. Next, talk to Kenley to access the challenge token shop. You can earn challenge tokens by clearing weekly bosses. Here the shop is pretty standard as well with easy access to flames and droplets for the challenge tokens. Definitely try to get all the flames from here as it's pretty hard to come by them outside of events. That about wraps up floor 1. I'll quickly run through what you can expect to see as you open up the other floors. However, I'll provide more depth in subsequent videos. Once you reach the second floor, you get access to the Magic Wardrobe, a mobbing event where you accumulate points that translate into experience. This can be done once a day per world. Additionally, you enhance the event map clear skill. It will now summon monster blocks instead of rocking horses which give additional XP, and the skill will damage 15 mobs versus 10. Finally, the cooking collection buff also improves by 5s across the board. Once you reach the third floor, you gain access to the Dolphin Fountain up to two times a day for 100 event coins each run. This is a minigame which acts as an extreme growth potion upon completion. Great for leveling characters from 141 to 200. Also, the Magic Wardrobe doubles the points you can accumulate giving more experience. Additionally, a new map clear skill unlocks at this floor which provides a wider attack in a 4 hit burst. And finally, the Cooking Collection buff improves by an additional 5 across the board. 
All right, once you reach the final floor, you unlock quite a bit on the events you already have. A third use of the Dolphin Fountain, an additional 50% point boost to the prior tiers of Magic Wardrobe, further increasing daily XP reward, an improved version of the new map clear skill, which has a wider range, and the final version of the Cooking Collection buff, which gives 20 all stat, attack, IED, and boss damage, as well as 2000 HP and mana. Finally, after finishing the fourth tier, you unlock a high stat medal with 18 all stat, 7 attack and magic attack, and 950 HP and MP. Also, you gain access to his shared memory quest. This can be completed up to three times, once per day across three days. The first two times grant 300 event coins, and the last time gives you a choice of the Elleroid or Baby Rithroid androids. Seriously, thank you if you made it all the way to the end of this video. One curious thing I've really been thinking about while editing is the name of Moment Tree. I had to speak it out loud so many times, I wasn't really sure if it was supposed to be a homophone for momentary, or a mashup of moment, or maybe memento, and tree. I feel like memento and tree makes the most sense, but as the least direct translation because of the O. Uh, anyway, I digress. Let me know your thoughts on this or the video overall down in the comments.